Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome back to Coffee in the Word. Oh, my goodness. I had one heck of a week uh, this past week. As, uh, as I stated before, uh, I've been doing, I did this Taekwondo thing all last week. It was four hours a day of Taekwondo training. And yesterday, I missed the readings yesterday because I was just absolutely exhausted. I hurt all over, but hey, it was a, it was a good time. It was great exercise. Um, so what I'm going to do today, I'm going to read yesterday's, and then I'll read today's. So let's go ahead and get started. So with that, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I hope and pray you're all doing well. Uh, so I'm going to start out with yesterday's. Uh, the psalmody for yesterday was Psalm 24, verses 7 through 10. And as always, may God bless the reading of his word. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Praise God. That's a good one. Uh, the Old Testament lesson for yesterday was uh, 1 Samuel 8, verses 1 through 22. So here we go. When Samuel became old, he made his sons judge over Israel. The name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abijah. And they were judges in Beersheba. Yet his sons did not walk in his ways, but turned aside after gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. Then all of the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Behold, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint for us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Obey the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they... For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. According to all the deeds that they have done from the day I brought them out of Egypt, even to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so they are also doing to you. Now then, obey their voice, only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking for, for a king from him. And he said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plow his ground, and to reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war, and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his servants. He will take the tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to the officers, to his officers and to his servants. He will take your male servants and female servants and the best of your young men and your donkeys and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of, the, of your flocks, and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the, but the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, No, but there shall be a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, that our king may judge us, and go out before us, and fight our battles. And when Samuel had heard all the words of the people, he repeated them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Obey their voice and make them a king. And Samuel then said to the men of Israel, Go, every man to his city. Mm. The New Testament lesson for yesterday was uh, Acts 21, 15 through 36. After these days, we got ready and went up to Jerusalem. And some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us, bringing us to the house of Manassan of Cyprus, an early disciple 
with whom we, we should lodge. When we had come to Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. After greeting them, he related one by one that the things that God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified God, and they said to him, See, you see, brother, how many thousands there are among the Jews of those who have believed? They are, they are all zealous for the law, and they have been told about you, that you teach all the Jews who are among them, the Gentiles, to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or walk according to our customs. What then is to be done? They will certainly hear you that we hear that you have come. Do therefore what we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take these men and purify yourselves along with them and pay their expenses, so that they may so that they may shave their heads. Thus all will know that there is nothing in what they have been told about you, but that you yourselves also live in observant, observance of the law. But as for the Gentiles who have believed, we have sent a letter with our judgment that they should abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from what has been strangled, and from sexual immorality. Then Paul took the men, and the next day he purified himself along with the men, and went into the temple, giving notice when the days of purification would be fulfilled, and offered and, and the offering presented for each, each of them. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who was teaching everyone everywhere against the people and the law and this place. Moreover, he even brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Trophimus the Ephesian, with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was stirred up, and the people ran together, and they seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and at once the gates were shut. And as they were seeking to kill him, word came to the tribune of the cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. He at once took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And, and when they saw the tribune and all the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the tribune came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains and inquired who he was and what he had done. And some in the crowd were shouting one thing and some another. And as he could not learn, learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. And when he came to the steps, he was actually carried by soldiers because of the violence of the crowd. For the mob of the people followed, crying out, Away with him! Mm. And the prayer of the day for yesterday, let us pray. Lord Jesus, your death, the temple curtain, was torn from the top to bottom, giving access to your holy presence to all the people. By the preaching of your gospel, may you be our peace. For you have made us one, and have broken down in your flesh the dividing wall of hostility by fulfilling the law in your death on the cross. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Boy, I'm glad I read that because uh, that brings us uh, to today's readings. Uh, the psalmody for today is Psalm 149. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8. Additional Psalm is 149. That's one of the suggestions it gives. So here we go. Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8. O God, you are my God, earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in dry and weary land, where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the, in the sanctuary, beholding your power and, and glory. Because of your steadfast love, better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. When I, remember, when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. 
right, your right hand upholds me. The Old Testament lesson this morning uh, is 1 Samuel 9, verses 1 through 27. And there was a man of Benjamin, whose name was Kish, the son of Abel, the son of Zeror, and the son of Bacorath, son of Aphia, a Benjamite, a man of wealth. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a handsome young man. And there was not a man among the people of Israel more handsome than he. From his shoulder upward he was taller than any of the people. Now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. So Kish said to Saul his son, Take one of the young men with you, and arise, go and look for the donkeys. And he passed through the hill country of Ephraim, and passed through the land of Shalashah. But they did not find him, and they passed through the land of Sh Shalim, but there was not there. Then they passed through the land of Benjamin, but did not find him. When they came to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant who was with him, Come, let us go back, lest my father cease to care about the donkeys and become anxious about us. But he said to him, Behold, there is a man of God in this city, and he is a man who is held in honor. All that he says comes true. So now let us go there. Perhaps he can tell us the way we should go. Then Saul said to his servant, But if we go, what can we bring, bring the man? For the bread in our sacks is gone, and there is no present to bring to the man of God. What do we have? The servant answered Saul again, Here, I have with me a quarter of a shekel of silver, and I will give it to the man of God to tell us our way. Formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, he said, Come, let us go to the seer, for today's prophet was formerly called a seer. And Saul said to his servant, Well said, Come, let us go. So they went to the city where there was a man of God, where the man of God was. And as they went up to the hill, went up the hill to the city, they met young women coming out to draw water, and said to them, "Is the seer here?" And they answered, "He is. Behold, he is just ahead of you. Hurry! He has come just now to the city, because of the people, because the people have a sacrifice today on the high place. As soon as you enter the city, you will find him before he goes up to the high place to eat, for the people will not eat till he comes." since he must bless the sacrifice. Afterwards, those who are invited will eat. Now go up, for you will meet him immediately. So they went up to the city, and as they were entering the city, they saw Samuel coming out towards them on his way up to the high place. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed to Samuel, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send to you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him to be prince over my people Israel. He shall save my people from the hand of the Philistines, for I have seen my people because of their cry has come to me. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord told him, Here is the man of whom I spoke to you. He it is who shall restrain my people. Then Saul approached Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, where is the house of the seer? And Samuel said to Saul, I am the seer. Go up before me to the high place, for today you shall eat with me, and in the morning I will let you go and will tell you all that is on your mind. As for your donkeys that were lost three days ago, do not set your mind on them, for they have been found. And for whom, it, and for whom is all that is desirable in Israel? Is it not for you and for all your father's house? And Saul answered, I am not a Benjamite, from the least of the tribes of Israel. Let me read that again. And Saul answered, Am I not a Benjamite, from the least of the tribes of Israel? And is not my clan the humblest of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin? Why then have you spoken to me in this way? Then Samuel took Saul and his young man, and brought them into the hall, and gave them a place at the head of, of those who had been invited, who were about thirty persons. And Samuel said to the cook, Bring the portion I gave you, of which I said to you, put it aside. So the cook took up the leg and, and what was on it, and set them before Saul. And Saul said, See, what was kept is set before you. Eat, because it was kept for you, 
until the hour anointed, that you might eat with the guests. So Saul ate with Samuel that day, and when they had come down from the high place into the city, a bed was spread for Saul on the roof. Oh, excuse me. I'm tired. Roof, and he lay down to sleep. Then, at the break of dawn, Samuel called to Saul on the roof, Up, that I may send you on your way. So Saul arose, and both he and Samuel went out into the street. And as they were going down to the outskirts of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Tell the servant to pass on before us, and when he passes on, stop here yourself for a, for a while, that I may make known to you the word of God. Mm. Oh, this is such a good story. The New Testament lesson for today is Acts 21:37 through 22:16. So here we go. As Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the tribune, "May I say something to you?" And he said, "Do you know Greek? Are you not the Egyptian then who recently stirred up a revolt and led the 4,000 men of the assassins out into the wilderness?" And Paul replied, I am a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, a citizen of no obscure city. I beg you, permit me to speak to the people. And when he had given him permission, Paul, standing on the steps, motioned with his hand to the people, and there was a great hush, and he addressed them in the Hebrew language, saying, Brothers, fathers, hear the defense that I now make before you. And when they heard that he was addressing them in the Hebrew language, they became even more quiet, and he said, I am a Jew, born in Tarshish in Cilicia, but brought up to this, to this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, Gam, yeah, Gamaliel, according to the strict manner of the law of our fathers, being zealous for God, as, as all of you are to this day. All of, all of you are this day. I persecuted this way to, to the death, binding and delivering to prison both men and women as as the high priest and as the whole council of elders can bear me witness from them i received letters to the brothers and i journeyed toward damascus to take those also who were there and bring them in bonds to jerusalem to be punished as i was on the way and drew near to damascus about noon a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Rise and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all that is appointed for you to do. And then since I could not see because of the brightness of the light, I was led by the hand by those who were with me, and came to Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me, and standing by me said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour I received my sight and saw him. And he said, The God of our fathers appointed you to know, know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear a voice from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to everyone of what you have seen and heard. And now, why do you wait? Rise and be baptized, and wash away your sins, calling on his name. And this is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. O gracious God, your servant and apostle James was the first among the twelve to suffer martyrdom for the name of Jesus Christ. Pour out upon the leaders of your church that spirit, that spirit of self-denying service, that they may forsake all false and passing allurements and follow Christ alone, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Well, that was a little long one, but it's such a good story, and uh, I really enjoyed doing this. And uh, thank you for all the compliments that I receive from time to time. Uh, I hope you're getting something out of this. I hope somebody does. But anyway, 
God bless, and y'all have a great day. And if you're in southeast Texas, y'all stay dry. Uh, getting a lot of rain today from Hurricane Hannah. It's a hurricane now. So anyway, y'all stay safe. So be happy, be safe, and be blessed. And we'll see you tomorrow on Coffee in the Word. Bye-bye. God bless.